welcome to the Reality Revolution. In some recent episodes, we've explored Rosicrucian teachings and ancient secrets, one on the Law of Assumption, another on calling to the cosmic to gain money. These ancient teachings, primarily from Rosicrucians, I have found to be very applicable and powerful. Rosicrucian teachings come from a base of ancient knowledge that has been shared through decades and centuries regarding psychic power and occult knowledge that is incredibly powerful and applicable to your everyday life. I've been studying Rosicrucian teachings since I was in college when I joined the organization and they sent me these wonderful little pamphlets and booklets and I learned a lot about my energy system and breathing techniques and I continue to learn. One author, Joseph Weed, also explores these ancient teachings in his book, The Wisdom of the Mystic Masters. Something I briefly mentioned in my episode, The Secret Power of Rhythm, is the Rosicrucian teaching on the Law of Cycles. They have broken it down so that there are specific cycles for your health, for your life, for your business. And in understanding these cycles, you can get a better understanding of events and things that may come up in your journey. We all go through a process of cycles. We can see it in the world around us with the seasons of winter and summer that regularly come. We can see the cycle of pregnancy to birth. They all have specific cycles and nature is made up of specific cycular activity. And we can also look at our own lives and if we understand these ancient teachings, it can give us a leg up and an advantage and in many cases help us to manifest greater amounts of money and improve our own health. Joseph Weed was an advanced Rosicrucian practitioner who wrote many books and we'll be exploring some of his teachings in further episodes as well. He begins by saying, people often ask, if the Rosicrucian order teaches astrology or numerology, and when they are told it does not, seem surprised. I thought Rosicrucians were modern mystics, one man said. And does not the study of both astrology and numerology belong in the arcanum of mysticism? The Rosicrucians are modern mystics, but very practical ones. Their training is designed to guide the sincere seeker to become a master of his destiny, as symbolized in the tarot by the card entitled the Magus. This card portrays a man with confident bearing standing upon the bank of a river or sea. Flowers grow at his feet, and fish swim in the water, but his head is held high among the stars. The symbolism is clear. This is a man with both feet planted firmly on the ground. His foundations are secure, and one knows he will make no missteps. Yet his attention is not focused upon the earth and the waters below. The flowers wave in the breeze and give off their scent, and little waves break at his feet, yet his gaze is heavenward, and his thoughts are with the stars. This is the Magus, the ideal human being toward which we all strive either consciously or without realizing it. This is the archetype to be attained through study and practice of the Rosicrucian teachings. Significant it is that this Magus has his feet upon the ground, so has the ideal Rosicrucian. He is aware of the arts of astrology and numerology, but does not lean upon them. Not because they are false, for they are real enough, but because they are incomplete. Both embrace too many unknowns. The Rosicrucian instead makes a thorough study of the cycles of life and thus is able to substitute practical certainty for mere possibility. Let me explain. Everything is subject to cyclic law. Everything you can see, hear, or touch, everything you can be aware of in any way is subject to cyclic law. This means it vibrates or responds or is moved in a certain definite rhythm. The earth revolves on its axis every 24 hours, creating day and night. It travels around the sun every 365 and a quarter days, and this results in the rhythmic changing of seasons. Mountains are raised sharp and clear against the sky, but as wind and rain and sunlight take their toll, the peaks become rounded hills, 
and after thousands of years return once again to rolling plains. Trees from small seeds grow large, then wither and die, each in its own time. Everything in the universe, and indeed the universe itself, lives and moves in cycles. No one knows why this is so, but everyone knows that it is so. We are born, grown up, learn, work, play, love, reproduce, and then grow old and die. We human beings have our cycles, but unlike the earth and the plants and the stars, we can control, to a large degree, the what and when of our existence. We need not be slaves to the things of fate. We have free will. There are those who will dispute this. They say we are forced by circumstance to make what seems to be free choices, but what are really conditioned reflex actions, and are thus determined for us in advance. This is only partly true. There are many decisions from which we cannot escape, but on the other hand, we know there are many occasions each day when we are fully capable of taking either road presented. This is not illusion or self-deception. Looking back on a choice made and observing that it was not to our best interest, we can, without slightest restraint, proceed to follow a course directly opposite. This does not deny that man is constantly subjected to tendencies, urges, inspirations and propitious presentations in the form of opportunities and temptations to good, evil and neutral acts. The same may be said of cosmic influences which affect human beings in the form of tendencies, but there is no power that forces their acceptance upon man. He is ever a free agent to choose between one impulse and another, one inspiration and another, or one temptation and another. But having chosen, he must accept the responsibility for his decision. Even though we accept the fact that man is a free agent with the power of free choice, it is still necessary to consider the nature and source of the impulses, urges, and temptations that come before him and call for him to make a choice. If these diverse opportunities did not present themselves, and if these varying impulses and urges were not occurring each moment, there would be no reason for him to have free choice, nor would he have occasion to reason or to think or to use his will. Of all living things, man alone is unique in the possession of the ability to act freely. But unfortunately, the majority usually choose unwisely, and the salvation and advancement of the human race has been left to a relatively small minority of dedicated, clear-thinking, far-sighted men and women. You can and should be among these leaders. So start now to live in harmony with the law of cycles, as I will explain it. Then you will find yourself going through life with the wind at your back, as the Irish so colorfully put it. Work in harmony with the cosmic rhythms of your nature. We are all daily faced with the need for recognized decisions. The man in his business, the woman in the home, the child in the school, find themselves face to face with perplexing problems which could have serious effects on their future. As these people decide, so they will determine their fate and establish their destiny. But to yield to an inspiration or an impulse or temptation with no other warrant than a judgment based upon analytical reasoning is in most cases like gambling on the toss of a coin. It is impossible for human reason to go beyond knowledge and information in the mind of the reasoner. So that even in those rare cases, when the reasoning is clear-cut and perfect, the decision may still be wrong because the information was incomplete. However, there are periods or cycles in everyone's life when an urge followed will act toward a successful conclusion, whether that action be a business proposition, a journey, the building of a home, the buying and selling of merchandise, or anything that is created or brought into existence by natural law or the will of man. By working in harmony with the proper periods, the utmost success can be attained. But if one persists in working against them, it is like swimming upstream and usually ends in defeat. You are a free agent. You can work in harmony with the rhythms of your nature or against them. You can thus become a master of your fate or a slave to circumstance. Choose. Many people try to ignore the unusual in life because they do not understand or cannot learn the logical theory which explains it. 
It is not too difficult to argue against the possibility of a cosmic rhythm which affects your actions and welfare. One can make quite a case, but do not be too quick to accept mere reason. You may not be in possession of all the facts. You know the story of the ranch hand who encountered for the first time an electrically charged fence. He had seen wire fences all his life. He had built many corrals out of wire, and he felt he knew all there was to know about wire fences. But one day he came to one of those modern corrals, lightly constructed of only a double wire strand. Naturally, he was contemptuous because he couldn't see how it would hold a two-day-old calf, much less a full-grown steer or horse. The owner warned him not to touch the wire because it was charged. The ranch hand didn't know what this meant, and to show his contempt, he reached to tear it from a post. Well, you know what happened. The shock knocked him down and scared the wits out of him. Then at last he began to see why the animals in the corral were careful to keep from touching the wire and to realize that things are not always so simple as they appear to be. So try not to be too much like the cowpuncher. All the energy in the universe has a single source. Some call it the cosmic, some the first cause, some call it God. Whatever this source may be, we don't know much about it. We may reason about it, but even the most highly illumined sages do not pretend to know or understand it. When this energy reaches our level, we can begin to comprehend it. The broader and higher our development, the better our understanding. The wise men in all ages and among all people describe it in much the same way. The ancient Chinese pictured it as a trilogy, the opposites yan and yin, which when united form the cosmic circle. The Christian theologians refer to the three persons in God and the Rosicrucians to the three sides of the triangle. The Hindu seers were more explicit. They said the primary energy divided first into three different energies and then into seven. The ancient Kabbalah of the Hebrews says the same but in a different way in its description of the ten Sephiroth, again three and seven. Everything in the universe received its primary impulse for existence from one or another of these seven, but was also subjected to the influence of the millions and millions of ramifications, subtle and gross, of the energy supplied by all seven. The early experimenters in rocket propulsion were frustrated by the apparent inefficiency of this presumably ideal method. They had failed to apply a basic truth and tried to propel their vehicles with a continuous flow of burning fuel, like a rocket. What they overlooked is that there is no such thing as continuous pressure in our universe. When they came to the realization that everything is moved by a repeated impulse, they incorporated that idea into the engine design and succeeded. Our present day jet planes and rocket moon flights are the result. The law that is true on the human level is also true on the highest level we can imagine. The great Sephiroth or the great Ray, call it what you will, that energized you at your birth continues to support you with impulses that are characteristic of its own unique quality. Any thought or action of yours that is initiated while this impulsing energy is gaining momentum carries along quite easily toward success. While those begin in a descending cycle are almost always doomed to frustration or failure, you can prove this law yourself by means of a simple experiment. Throw a ball forward while running forward. Note how far it goes, then throw it forward again with the same energy while standing still or moving backward. See the difference? Once this law was discovered, the Rosicrucians studied it with great interest. But the problem facing them was to learn how to apply it, and this took centuries of study. Now, today, the fruits of those years of effort are available to all. Detailed instruction in the application of cyclic law is part of the Rosicrucian teaching and available only to Rosicrucian students. But this basic principles can be revealed and will be explained to you in this episode. The Cycle of Existence Everything in the world, whether created by nature or by man, has a cycle of existence distinctly its own. This refers not only to men and mountains, to machines and vegetables, but also to corporations and diseases and even ideas and emotions all have a definite starting point and a distinctive pulsation or rhythm of existence. These cycles are like lines drawn out for various lengths and divided through their lengths and duration into equal segments. The line of your life can be compared to the line that the captain of a ship marks on a chart 
for the course he intends to follow. An ocean liner going from New York to Gibraltar may take seven days, so the captain will mark on the line the position he expects the boat to be at the end of each day. But not every day will be the same. The start may be foggy and cold, the next day rough and windy, the third day warmer but with headwinds that slow the boat, the fourth day bright and sunny and so on. So it can be said that the pulsation or periodicity of the journey is seven days each with its own characteristic influences. The journey of life is much like a sea voyage. Each life begins at a certain time and place and is divided into periods like the days of the ocean journey. The average person is not aware of these periods which present opportunities or obstacles at different times and is therefore not prepared to meet them until they are in full manifestation. He is then handicapped in resolving them properly by his lack of knowledge of the assisting or hindering tendencies which exist in that period. Not only your life itself, but every enterprise you enter into has cycles which begin at its inception. Thus, the information which follows is of value not only to you personally, but may be applied to your business or to any business or organization or project in which you may take interest. Medical science and the students of biology and physiology agree that human life is divided into a progression of periods of seven years each. From birth to the age of seven, there is a period of self-discovery in which the growing child learns his relation to the material world and begins to adjust himself to it. From seven to 14, physical growth and muscular control are important, and although the mind expands, it is a secondary consideration. Toward the end of this period, the distinction between the sexes shows itself. The third period is one of mental as well as physical growth, and the fourth one of growing spiritual awareness. The fifth is a creative period, and so on. Human beings were designed by the Creator to live for twenty and one half periods of seven years each, or about 140 years. Of course, today, no one lives that long. In fact, half or 72 years is usually considered a good long life and those who live longer are regarded as exceptional. This shortening of the potential lifespan is the result of man's failure to live according to the laws of nature. But our knowledge and self-discipline are increasing and human life is gradually lengthening. Most cycles have seven divisions like the seven days of the week or the seven notes in a musical octave. There is a reason for this which has to do with the origin of energy itself. But here we have limited space and can consider only the efforts and not their cause. There are also cycles of three, four, and twelve periods, but those of seven are the most frequent. Your private yearly life cycle. Just as a human life is divided into periods of seven years, so each year in that life is made up of seven periods. Starting with your birthday, there are seven periods of approximately 52 days. And each one of these periods provides you with different possibilities, opportunities to be seized or problems to be solved. The calendar year has nothing to do with this cycle. This is your private cycle. And it extends from the day of your birthday in one year to the day before your birthday the next. To work properly with your own yearly cycle, get a calendar. And starting with your birthday, count off 52 days. Thus, if you were born on January 5th, circle the date and also circle February 26th, which is the 52nd day. This is your first period. Make a chart of this for the entire year so that you can always tell at a glance in what period you are. When you have done this, write or type the following and keep it so that you can always have easy access to it. So you start out. You find out your birth date, you start with that birth date, and then count 52 days for each period. I'm going to go through these periods. You can mark this and come back and listen to these to get an idea of which period you're in, and it can help you make decisions and judgments. Life cycle, the first period. This is the period of opportunity. It is the best time to advance your interests with others who may have the power and influence to help you. This is the time to ask favors, to seek employment or loans or business concessions, to form partnerships or to make investments, 
This is also a good time to advance yourself among the people of your city, state, or country to build up your credit standing or your reputation. This is the best time for you to push yourself forward with determination so far as your name, your integrity, and your honor are concerned. Now. You take your birth date and you add 52 days and then you come to the life cycle second period. The second period is distinctly different. It is the best time to plan short journeys or trips of immediate importance. It is also an excellent time for moving about, if that should be necessary. In other words, this is a period propitious for changes that can be started and finished within the period itself. In a business way, it is a good period for movable things such as freight, cargoes, automobiles, trains, public conveyances, or even public lectures or performances which may move from place to place. It also presents excellent opportunities for those who deal with liquids, milk, water, chemicals, gasoline, oil, and other products of this character. Dealing with people who are in business associated with the foregoing will be more successful at this time than at any other. This is also a very good period for businesses which cater to transients such as hotels, restaurants, car rentals, and similar services. However, one should not plan a change of business or start a new career or make any permanent change during this period, and contracts and other arrangements that are intended to last a long time should not be entered into. It is an unfavorable period to borrow or lend money, and it is not a good for starting the construction of a building or entering upon a project that requires a substantial investment. Certainly it is a most unfavorable period to speculate in the stock market or to gamble in any form. The third period, the next 52 days, this period requires that you exercise discrimination and good judgment. It usually brings a great inflow of energy which makes you want to do great and important things. If directed carefully, this can be the best time in the year to improve your health or build up your business or do anything that requires the expenditure of energy. However, good judgment is needed. You'll be tempted to undertake projects which have no possibility of success or which may take so long to develop that you will have to abandon them before completion. This is a great time to tackle and overcome obstacles that have blocked progress in the past to make a strong second effort to solve problems earlier abandoned because of lack of energy. It is a great time for dealing with things that require great energy such as iron and steel, electrical machinery, cutlery, sharp instruments, and fire. It is also a particularly good period to oppose competitors or deal with enemies who have heretofore been obstacles in your path. It is an unfavorable period for men or women to try to deal with women, but on the other hand, it is an excellent period for women to appeal to men when desiring favors or preferment or aid in business or social matters. Arguments and strife should be avoided because the outcome is very apt to be bad. But if you have something to sell which you can put across in one forceful interview, this is the best period. Life cycle, the fourth period. In this period, the mental and spiritual nature is stimulated. It is thus an excellent period for writing books, producing plays, making plans for all matters, requiring imagination and quick thinking, and the ability to express your thoughts lucidly. Your mind will be filled with new ideas which will come very rapidly, so it is important that you grasp them quickly and put them into practice before they are forgotten or pushed aside by the new thoughts which will crowd upon their heels. It is therefore a good period to act on impulse or hunches. You will be optimistic in this period, but somewhat nervous and restless, which is to be expected with your imagination highly charged. It is a good period to deal with literary people, writers, journalists, book or magazine publishers, but be careful to scrutinize all legal and other documents most carefully because deception is possible and it is a period when falsehood is as eloquently and easily expressed as the truth. Most great losses through robbery or deception or misunderstood legal situations occur in this period and you should take precautions to protect yourself. However, it is a good time for study and for gaining information and knowledge but it is not a propitious period to enter marriage, to hire help, or to buy homes, business, or land. The fifth life cycle. This is the period in which it is possible for you to achieve your greatest success in your personal affairs. This is the time in your yearly cycle when your interests will expand and your prosperity increase. 
Your mind, likewise, will become a more effective instrument, sharper and clearer. You will become more often in your relations with others, move with more confidence and display social ability, benevolence and sympathy. This is the best period for dealing with the law, with lawyers and judges, the courts, government officials, men of prominence in the profession and people of wealth. It is also a good period to begin new ventures that may take some time to grow, to plan large business negotiations or to undertake long journeys. It is particularly good for collecting money due for speculation in stock or real estate. But be sure to avoid every negotiation that is not completely legitimate. Also avoid any dealings in cattle or meat products or with marine affairs. The sixth life cycle. You've now counted 52 days and created each life cycle and this is the sixth of those seven cycles this is the best time in your yearly cycle for rest relaxation and amusement this does not mean that business will not prosper on the contrary all good and legitimate business will continue with almost as much success as in the preceding period however now is the time to make long or short trips for the purpose of renewing friendships or for cultivating new friends men among women and women among men and to renew and improve friendships and relation that already exist it is a particularly fortunate time for business matters that touch upon art music literature sculpture perfumes flowers and personal adornments it is a good period for a man to seek preferment or favors or business agreement or cooperation from a woman just as the third period is better for women to obtain such favors from men it is the best period to buy stocks or bonds for investment and to employ others. The seventh life cycle period. This is the most critical of your yearly cycle. During these 52 days, the elements in your life that are no longer needed for your development gradually fall away in order to make way for those which are new and better. Often this will cause distress and a sense of loss and may tempt you to foolish actions and decisions. Remember, it is a period of seeming devolution which always precedes a period of evolution and new opportunity take advantage of the momentum in this period to rid yourself of the old and unwanted but be sure to exercise good judgment if there is something that has been hanging fire and is about to end let it do so but do not deliberately break ties or destroy relationships that have vitality and are still valuable for the reasons mentioned your mind is likely to become despondent and you'll be easily discouraged Remember, you are being influenced by the quality of the period you are in, and do not permit pessimism you feel to warp your judgment or inhibit your decisions. The qualities of this period exerts very subtle influences, and it is necessary that you be much more alert than normal in appraising your feelings and your reactions to external influences. In the fourth period, it is advisable to seize immediately upon your ideas or hunches and make quick decisions. Now, the reverse is true. Impulsiveness will bring disaster. Be careful in all necessary judgments and postpone to the next period every decision possible. However, this is a good period for dealing with older people and those who by their nature or position must consider each action most carefully. It is also an excellent time for inventing things or dealing in inventions or for applying for patents or copyrights. Now, you will have some success in dealing in real estate, mines, minerals, and all things deeply seated in the earth or in hidden places. On the other hand, it is definitely the least favorable time of your year to start anything new or launch a new business or to make new expenditures in an old one. To a certain degree, the influences of each period will overlap the one before after it. Thus, it is advisable to be careful in all judgments and actions on the last two and the first two days of each period. If you would like to make a quick check on the reliability of the foregoing information, find the dates of your seventh period and check back over what occurred between these dates each year for the last 10 or 15 years. I'm sure you will discover that your worst frustrations, disappointments, and bad luck happened then. Try it. Your life cycle is divided into seven periods, and we call this your major cycle or cycle number one. Each year, likewise, is divided into seven periods each of the 52 days, and this is called cycle number two. We are assigning numbers to the cycles because there are a great many. We will treat with only two more the business cycle, which we will call cycle three, and the health cycle, which we call cycle four. 
This is all we have space to describe and in fact all that the average person normally cares to study. However, the Rosicrucians have made a thorough study of cycles and have experimented with them over many hundreds of years and they willingly teach their students all they know. These additional cycles take the influence of the moon into consideration and cover the long lunar cycle of 28 days and how it breaks down into three and one half day periods, each with its own quality and influence. Then there is the short lunar cycle of 12 hours, which in turn breaks down into three four hour periods, each period short and long, exerts positive and negative influences of certain types which affect us, our lives, our business affairs, plants, the tides, fish, animals, sex, mental attitudes, and in fact, everything. This study is about as involved as that of business bookkeeping, but a good student can become proficient in about six months. He can then describe with accuracy all of the aiding or hindering influences which are present at each hour of the day, week, or month, and recommend the best course of action. The Business Cycle Everything has its own cycle of existence marked off by periods of definite duration. This cycle starts on the day when the person or object or plan or association or business comes into existence. It is important therefore when considering the cycle of a business that you know the day the business started. With an incorporated business this normally would be the day on which the articles of incorporation or charter were granted. A partnership would date its inception from the day the agreement was signed. However, there are many businesses where the starting date is not so obvious. Do not make the mistake of assuming that the tax year or the fiscal year starts the same day as the company did. It might or might not. If there is no documented starting date, try to discover the day the business opened its doors or when the doctor or lawyer or accountant hung out his shingle. Consider this then the beginning of the cyclic year and calculate accordingly. In the case of a business that has changed hands or changed its name the date on which the firm began to operate under the new name or with new owners would be the birthday of the business regardless of how long it had been operating before that day. In some cases, the day on which a group of people might gather together and decide to start a business and actually assign control and duties to certain individuals would be the birthday and not the day on which the announcement was made to the public. As you can see, this point may require some thought and study. 52 days. So you start with the first business cycle and count 52 days to create your seven periods. Business cycle first period. Begin by marking the birthday of the business on a calendar and then checking off the dates, 52 days apart. That measure the seven periods. During the first 52 days of each yearly business cycle, the business will find great success in promotion and advertising. It is an excellent time to build up sales and goodwill. This is the time to solicit endorsements from authorities or prominent people and concerns that will result in favorable publicity and eventual sales increases. Contracts with government officials will go smoothly and efforts to obtain favorable publicity and eventual sales increases. Contracts with government officials will go smoothly and efforts to obtain favorable legislation or protective bills will receive thoughtful consideration. The direct aims of the business in this period should be to enhance its name, reputation, and prestige. Business Cycle Second Period During the second period of its yearly cycle, a business will find the best time to make changes in employees and their duties, temporary changes in location, modifications of business practice, or tentatively to try out new plans and propositions. On the other hand, it is not a good time to enter into new agreements to make any long-term plans or enter into contracts of any kind unless they are reduced to writing. Verbal agreements made are very likely to be ignored or changed at a later date. However, it is a good period to build up business friendships and to contact prospective customers or clients. Business Cycle Third Period This is the best building period and the time when all growth factors should be pushed to the utmost. It is also a propitious time to collect and get money. However, it would be wise to avoid the courts or legal contention with business enemies, although other legal matters having to do with positive growth and expansion will meet with favorable reaction and should be pushed. Watch out for accidents, disasters, troubles from competitors and enemies, or sudden explosions of wrath, enmity, 
or hatred within the company and also outside but affecting it. Manufacturing plants should guard against fires or explosions and all businesses should be on guard against enemies who may attack their life and reputation. If the business deals with the army, navy, or any military department of the government, negotiations will go very smoothly in this period. Business cycle fourth period. This is the time to initiate the largest advertising campaign. Promotion to customers and the public will have greater success now than at any other time of the cyclic year. It is also a good time to make new agreements and draw up new contracts, transfers, and similar documents. Now is the best time in the business year to deal with newspapers and newspaper men with diplomats and negotiators. However, care must be taken lest deceptions be made or tricky agreements offered for these could cause trouble later on. Business Cycle Fifth Period This is an excellent period for growth, expansion, and financial success. To seek out and make investments to obtain credit or extend time in which payments are to be made, it is about the best period for selling and for delivering merchandise sold, from which good profits will result. It is a good time to collect long-standing accounts and even debts considered bad and an excellent time for getting a favorable decision in the courts if right is on your side. It is now the best time to expand to foreign lands or to deal with international concerns and it is a particularly good period to promote relations and business affairs with railway and electronic companies and with all companies that cater to happiness and pleasure of the public. Business Cycle, Sixth Period If it is necessary to relax business activities at any time during the year, this is the time to do it. This is the best period for the chief executives and managers to take vacations, and it will be found that the affairs of the business will continue to prosper in their absence. However, if your business has to do with the production or sale of music, poetry, art objects, artists, materials, high fashion women's clothes, articles of adornment, beauty preparations, high-priced automobiles, oriental rugs, antique furniture, or any other luxury items, by all means keep at work, because this is the best time in the year for you. This is also the best time in the year for the heads of the business or its owner to establish personal friendships with its customers in order to help the business in the future. It is also an excellent period for collecting money, buying stocks, and bonds, or promoting the finances of the company through sound investments, and it is also a good time to form partnerships, combines, subsidiary corporations, and alliances aimed at ultimate expansion. Business Cycle 7th Period This is essentially a reconstruction period and must be treated as such. Do not start any new activity. Do not go heavily into advertising or expansion of a new line or new department. A certain tearing down must be expected and all new plans should be held up until it is over. Likewise, if you foresee changes that will necessitate the elimination of departments or personnel or the abandonment of certain factory sites in favor of better ones, this is the period in which it should be done. But great care must be taken, lest the destructive wave carry too far. This tendency is powerful during the seventh period and could affect aspects of the business which should be protected, so be on your guard. No new alliances or contracts should be made, and all actions should tend toward the conservative. Great diplomacy and care must be applied at all times, both in contacts within the business and with others on the outside, whether they be customers or suppliers or city or federal officials. Nothing of a radical nature should be permitted in selling or advertising or buying or, in fact, in any department of the business during the seventh period. Caution and conservatism should govern every action. A business which follows these guidelines has a far better chance to succeed than one which moves ahead in a haphazard fashion. In fact, some of the largest and best known and most successful corporations in the United States already use these patterns. You can do the same. Remember, though, that you yourself will have two cycles to deal with your own personal life cycle and the cycle of the business in which your interest yourself. Of course, if your birthday and the birthday of the business should coincide, you have no problem. But when they do not, there will be overlapping and conflicts. In these cases, you must exercise judgment. When the influences oppose, they must be blended, so analyze them carefully before you act. Here are certain points that may help you 
If the business is entirely your own, you may be guided by the conditions governing your personal life cycle because these will be more influential than those governing your business. However, the business itself must be carefully watched and any tendency to follow an unfavorable cyclic trend must be corrected immediately. This is another case where forewarned is forearmed. If you know what might happen and are alert to its possibility, you can take countermeasures in time to prevent a serious problem arising. If the business is not your own, but a corporation or a business belonging to others in which you're only a small investor or an employee, then the cycle of the business will control and must be followed even though it may conflict at times with your own. Remember, there are many times in the affairs of successful men when personal preferences, needs, and desires must be set aside in order that the business may prosper. The important point is whether your own affairs are so related to your business that they will both suffer together or prosper together, or whether they can be separated so that the business may prosper while you are having difficulty and vice versa. Here, your importance to the business must be a consideration. If you are but a minor employee and your acts are restricted to obeying rules and carrying out orders, then your personal cycle should be followed. On the other hand, if you hold a position of trust, of vital importance, and the future success of the business hinges on your decisions, then you must consider the business first. There's also the health cycle. You take your birth date and you begin with your birth date and you can create and understand your own health cycle. So the initial period of 52 days, you make a chart similar to the one for your personal life cycle. Start it on your birthday and mark it off in 52 day segments as before. During the first period, your vitality and health should be at its best. And if you happen to come into the period with your physical condition below normal, it will improve rapidly if you take care of yourself and avoid breaking any of the natural laws. Plenty of good air, walking in open and abundant water are the basics. Foods heavy in starches and those that are overheating should be avoided. The eyes in particular should be guarded. Do not use them over much and avoid using them in bright electric light or exposing them to direct sunlight. If an operation is needed or a system of health building is to be adopted, this is the time to start. The health cycle period two. In this period, a great many light and fleeting physical conditions may affect the body and passing emotional conditions may affect the mind. You may have temporary difficulty with the stomach, bowels, bloodstream and nerves but these conditions will come quickly and last only a short time. They should not be neglected, but given immediate remedial care. Then there will be no need for anxiety for all influences present in these 52 days tend to bring about rapid changes in your physical condition. There are likely to be days when you will have a headache or an upset stomach and other days when your eyes or ears will bother you and still others when catarrh or colds and attendant aches and pains will cause distress. Women in particular may suffer pains in the breasts and abdomen, but none of these need be serious. If you're cheerful, maintain an optimistic attitude and do not let your mind dwell too much on the ailments, you will find that they will respond quickly to the treatment you administer. Health cycle period three. Accidents may happen in this period, so be careful if you are aware of what might possibly occur and take steps to guard against it. You will minimize the effects and may possibly prevent it entirely. There is also possibility of suffering by burns or falls or blows. Be careful of your food too. Do not overheat and try to keep your body normally warm because there is a tendency to take cold as a result of overheating the body. Keep your bloodstream clean and your bowels active so that you may not be plagued with eruption in the skin and similar blood disorders. Your blood pressure has a tendency to rise in this period, so avoid overwork, overstrain, and anxiety, and thus protect yourself against any possible breakdown. Health cycle period four. This is the most trying time in the year for your nervous system. You may observe evidences in restlessness and uneasiness, and also in the malfunctioning of certain organs. Too much study or reading or planning and anything which makes you tense should be avoided. If your work demands great concentration, break it up every hour or so with five minutes of light diversion. Chat with someone, listen to some music. If a phonograph or radio is at hand or just sit in quiet meditation, you require more sleep and rest at this time than in any other part of the year. If you fret and become nervous, it may affect your digestion or cause 
your heart to palpitate. If you observe these signs, do not become worried unnecessarily, because their cause probably lies in your own nervousness. If you have been laboring for a long time at mental problems or under mental strain, it is wise to relax and rest for a few days during this period as insurance against more serious mental difficulties. Health Cycle Period 5 This is a good period during which your health should be excellent. If it is not, it can be improved quickly. Spend time out of doors and breathe deeply of fresh air. Observe the beauties of nature and let their healing balm reach into your physical and emotional nature. Live and eat with continence and avoid the tendency to overindulge in the appetites of the flesh, which is always very strong in the fifth period. This is a good period to recover from all sorts of chronic ailments, and if you but set your mind to it, you can get rid of any abnormal or subnormal conditions which have been plaguing your body for some time. It may be noted that your whole nature, physical, emotional, and mental, will respond to mental suggestion and psychic help much more readily in this period than at any other time of the year. Health Cycle Period 6 The temptation to overdo things also exists in this period. However, here it applies not only to physical appetites, but also to work, play, and all excitement. Avoid overindulgence of every sort and save yourself upset conditions which may affect your skin, throat, internal generative system, and kidneys. Drink plenty of water, take outdoor exercise, and get all the rest you need. Health Cycle Period 7 Chronic or lingering illness may be contracted in this period, so be careful lest you expose yourself to contagions of any sort. Avoid the persons and places where they may be contacted. Since your mind and spirits may be at low ebb, take positive steps to relax and find pleasurable recreation. Adopt an optimistic mental attitude, smile at yourself in the mirror each morning and tell yourself how lucky you are to be alive and how happy and grateful you are that you've received so many wonderful natural gifts and endowments. Never mind what you really think, tell yourself that anyway. Don't dose yourself over much with medicine and under no circumstances have an operation performed if you can avoid it. If you give prompt attention to every upset as soon as it becomes noticeable and maintain an optimistic attitude, you will have no trouble. The foregoing listing is for your information in order that you may know what tendencies exist and when they may strike. No one person will ever be the victim of all these ailments and troubles. In fact, if you follow the instructions on increasing psychic energy, none of this will ever bother you. But you may desire to help another and a knowledge of what may assail him at different times will aid you in supplying remedy and cure. The most important part of this is that which tells you your personal life cycle. Create this chart and print or type the opportunities and hazards that exist in each period. Some Roshukrushans make a separate card for each period so that they can examine it easily and understand better how to plan each day. They find that this gives them much more control of their destiny and heretofore and also the confidence that they are becoming like their ideal, the magus pictured on the tarot card. For a detailed description of cyclic influences by the Rosicrucian order, read H. Spencer Lewis's Self Mastery and Fate. It also has the cycles of your life. It has daily cycles, hourly cycles, and understanding these cycles are important. Now you may be saying, hey Brian, doesn't Neville Goddard teach us the pearl of great price? Are we really affected by conditions in the outside world? if we're tuned into the one power? I say absolutely, if we're tuned in properly to the one power, we can overcome any of these conditions. But these are programs. And that's why it's important. Refer to my episode that we are in a simulation. Simulations work on algorithms and formulas. And so within the simulation, we have these algorithms. And these algorithms are much more subtle than we are aware of. There is cycles. There's cycles to the day when we wake up and go to sleep. There's cycles to the week. There's always cycles involved in everything. We can overcome them. I have no doubt about that. We are more powerful than these cycles, but it helps us to understand the simulation that we're in, the algorithm, the working formulas that are defining what will happen to us next. And it gives us a leg up in understanding that. We can talk about this much, much more and Perhaps this isn't the best format 
And so I recommend you read The Wisdom of the Mystic Masters or Self-Mastering Fate by H. Spencer Lewis. But start to consider your own patterns. Look at what you've done in your life. This is based on hundreds and hundreds of years of study within the Rosicrucian order. This is not just something that they popped out. So there's something to it. This is based on many, many people over a long period of time sharing their own knowledge and information about their own lives and then coming up with this cyclic chart. So go back and listen to it. Take a look at it. And please, in the comments, I want to know if you've noticed any resonance with these cycles, if they've helped you out, if they're wrong. What I find in particular, when your birthday's coming, 50 days before and 50 days after, around that period of time, crazy stuff tends to happen. There's this period of time when your birthday is coming and you'll notice that these cycles tend to really come into fruition for that last and first cycle. Since I've known this information, I've noticed that most of all. But I'd love for you to share your own knowledge. And if you think it's BS, then let me know. I want your opinion. You might be right. What I'm trying to do is provide information to you in this format so that we can discuss it and we can come to a better understanding of these ancient laws and teachings. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Thank you.